Hey folks, our DIY violin kit has arrived, so we're going to unbox it and hopefully put it together. Let me set up an unboxing camera here. All right, and we've been joined by a little kitty here who's going to be helping. So, how do I... Yes, it's a box. And, oh God. Ta-da! Uh, I'm, I'm glad they put bubble wrap to protect it. <laughs> okay, um, we got, yes, yes, I love you. <laughs> we got some goodies here, I'm assuming this is the body of the violin, so let's save that for last. I don't think it is crushed, so everything seems solid. Let's start with the, oh no, let's start with whatever is this on top. First class wrapping there. It's the neck. All right, we have the neck, and uh, I will do an evaluation on the parts after I have them all unpacked. So we have a neck. Let's see what is in the bag of goodies. Ash, quit messing with the papers. <laughs> okay, it's a fingerboard. And the nut is still attached to the top of the fingerboard. And I'm, I'm glad it's the same color as it was in the picture. That's something. <laughs> and trash, where's my trash can? There it is, I missed. And these are fittings, and this bag. This is the bridge. Well, it's a bridge blank, so I don't expect it to be cut. It's the bridge blank. Well, before rubber bands, but you know this. And some pegs and end pin. Here we have oh. the thing is just rubber banded together, so it's a sound post blank. Actually it seems to be an okay quality sound post blank. I was expecting worse. Fine tuner of the type that I don't like. The chin rest clamps. Tail gut. Tail piece. It's interesting tail piece. And the, the, the chin rest. Uh, on, on, on the two set violin video of this, they complained that the chin rest did not have the holes, so they couldn't mount it with the hardware. Mine had holes, but for some mysterious reason they are plugged. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. We'll, we'll figure it out later. All right, it's the big one. It's light. You want the box, Ash? Don't get it. Oh! There it is! And... And, uh... It's not glued. Why is it not glued together? No? Wait a 
second. Where is the base bar? And we're, we're missing the base bar here. Inside the violin on the top part, there is this wood here, it's called the base bar. And ours came without one. So, um, a question that was asked in comments on the previous video was if a normal person with regular tools could just put this together. And I think the answer right now is no, because this is not finished in any way whatsoever. I mean, even if this were glued together, of course, you still have to cut the mortise for the neck that goes here. And uh, it's at the wrong angle. So if you put this together like this, like it is, just cutting the mortise, you would get a Baroque angled violin neck, which is not how modern violins are supposed to be. Uh, I need a moment to think about this, so I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm back, the cat is back, I got myself a chai tea latte, and I gave this some thinking and I have some thoughts to share. After analyzing these parts, I have a hypothesis of why you can get all this stuff so cheap on the internet. And what I think is these are the rejects of a factory line that somebody goes in at the end of the shift, picks up all the rejects and then puts them available on the internet for really cheap. That's my hypothesis, I could be completely wrong, but this is what I think, and here's why. All of these parts, all of these components have something wrong with them. Um, let's start with the chin rest, which had the holes fixed, the holes, were the holes were plugged, and I think it's because they were drilled wrong, they are off by quite a bit. So somebody picked this from the, re the, the reject bin, plugged the holes, and put it together with uh, other parts. The chin rest uh, clamp itself, it is plated on a golden collar. You can see that it's golden on the inside here part, but the outside did not get the gold plate. It's silverish in color. So this would have been a reject from the plating job and somebody went there and picked it up and put it on the kit. The tail piece, I have absolutely nothing wrong to say about it, I actually like it. I might be using it for something. The pegs and the end pin, they are advertised as boxwood. This is not boxwood. This is very likely the same thing that the fingerboard is, which is a uh, wood called jujube, which is good for pegs, but I would not do it on a fingerboard. A violin fingerboard historically has to be ebony and this one has problems too. The geometry is wrong. The fingerboard not only is arched this way, but it has a very slight concavity this way also. And uh, this one is dipping forward and it's completely wrong. It's doing this. And if I were to carve this, it's thin enough that if I were to carve it, I would remove so much wood, it would be too thin to work with. That and it's not the correct wood. The fingerboard needs to be ebony. The sound post blank is actually a pretty good sound post blank. I'm impressed. It has a very very dense wood, very uh, good ring count on it. It's good. This is just a little fine tuner. I don't like this type of fine tuner. They are too heavy. I prefer the little hook fine tuners. Tail gut is your standard nylon tail gut that most violins have. These are the standard steel strings that come with Chinese violins and they are absolutely terrible, so I don't ever I don't want to ever see them again. I have nothing bad to say about this bridge, but it's not necessarily a better quality of any kind, it's just basic. The neck itself, I like one thing about this neck, and it is that it was cut dead center on the grain, so it creates a very nice symmetric pattern. Are you gonna go somewhere? 
You want to see the neck? Don't nuzzle the camera. You're going to take it out of focus. You want to see the neck? Hey, you. Here. <laughs> but this was roughly cut. But I see chisel marks on it. So I don't know if it was cut by machine first. And then somebody went by hand and finished it up. It's pretty rough carved, it will take some work to make it look pretty, but the basic shape is the basic shape is there. Then we get to the violin itself. This wood, I wouldn't say that it is bottom of barrel, but definitely it's not the prettiest one. And it has had repairs done to it, but the way it was patched from the inside is absolutely terrible. It's dreadful. And it looks like it had other patches done to it. This is very rough cut on the inside. It does not look like it ever had a base bar installed in here because the, the, the splintering of the wood indicates it, never, it was never finished to that degree. However, I think this was cut by a machine and then finished by hand. Somebody had to inlay the purfling by hand, which is very sloppy in the corners, but it's acceptable. But my uh, conclusion why th that this was cut by a machine is because I can see the scorch marks of a laser cutter on the F holes. So I think a machine cut this according to a specific violin's dimensions that they have on a computer, probably a Stradivarius. Yeah, I would say a Stradivarius. If you squint and look at it at the distance, it's a Stradivarius pattern. And uh, somebody finished up the surface, the, so, somebody finished up the outside by hand but the inside they just left as it was after they did some patching. The rest of it, the back. I actually like this plain back. I have nothing against it. Again, the purfling is sloppy in the corners. This was done by somebody who was either in a terrible hurry or didn't know what they were doing very well. But I, I like that it's a plain back. I don't know what this staining is and how it's going to behave once you varnish it but yeah and it's a lot more finished the inside it's a lot more finished than the top the top they left completely rough the back is actually very well finished I like that this was open like this because I was able to measure the thickness of the plates and I think this is actually within many of the considered standards for violins Violins don't have an exact one standard to follow. There are different models by different makers and different people put their own spin on things. And the thickness of this plate is actually pretty good, the front, the top and the back. So there is hope for this. The ribs are the part that I hate the most because aesthetically, I don't know how they will behave as stone wood. It's impossible to tell at this point, but aesthetically, they are completely mismatched and look ugly. So this would be quite a hard job to make these ribs look pretty. So yes, I think this was made out of reject parts from an assembly line. And here we have it, a $40 violin. <laughs> but here's what we're going to do now, I have a plan. I'm going to attempt to put this together, make it sound, it, Make, make it as good as I can out of what I have to work with. And then if, and that's a big if, if it sounds good, I'm going to do a giveaway and give the finished violin to one of the viewers. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm a slow builder, so this will take me uh, several days to put together. It's not going to be quick. So if you want to try to win the violin, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications for when that video comes on. It's going to be a few days, maybe a couple of weeks. And uh, I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.